good morning welcome back to the channel so we've spent the weekend up at our little lodge up near Penrith it's December and it's the first properly cold snap of this winter so I'll come out and make a video about how to ride in cold weather I'm going to cover two things there's just two things you need to do when you're riding in cold weather one is you need to keep warm and second and actually this is even more important than keeping warm you need to keep upright so I'm going to look at those two elements break them down a bit and let's have a chat about riding in cold weather now the first thing I would say to you about riding in cold weather when I say cold weather I'm talking about sub-zero temperatures I'm talking about when the temperature gets below zero when there is a possibility of ice frost and snow on the ground so the first thing I'd say to you about that is if you don't have to ride in these conditions have a really serious think about whether you want to ride in these conditions because the biggest risk is falling off it's touching some ice maybe not even with your tyres maybe with a foot when you put your foot down that kind of thing will have you off the bike in an instant So before you even go out, I have a think what are the road conditions going to be like, what are the weather conditions going to be like. Am I putting myself at unnecessary risk by doing it? Because, you know, riding a motorbike, you are more vulnerable than other road users. And you've got to take that into account and you've got to weigh the risk off against the need for you to go out for a ride. But assuming and I'm sure you are because you're watching this channel but assuming that you're a sensible adult let's talk about riding in cold weather conditions so the first element I said I was going to talk about was keeping warm and not just keeping warm but keeping your kit in the right condition your bike in the right condition to ride when it's cold it's not having any gaps in your clothing anywhere you've got a gap in your clothing that lets air in <coughs> on a day like this when it's well the dashboard's showing zero degrees centigrade you'll feel it and it'll cut through to the ball and despite the fact the rest of your body and your hands and everything else might be warm if you've got a little gap at your neck here that's not that up actually if you've got a little gap at your neck here or your visor or something it'll cut through like a knife so first rule no gaps second rule when it's cold layer up the difficulty is balancing the number of layers against still having some flexibility and movements on the bike because when it's icy you want to be relaxed on the bike I'll talk about that in a minute you want to feel like you're in control you don't want to be too stiff and bulky but on the other hand layers are what will keep you warm so somebody asked me a question in the comments the other day oh you should do a video about what what kit to wear and all this kind of stuff so that's not my speciality there's other channels that look and kit and reviewing kit and testing against other stuff go and have a look for them but for me buy the best kit you can afford especially boots and gloves the winter gloves have made the first appearance this year buy the best kit you can afford i have um, a heated jacket which i'm wearing today and uh, you get the opportunity to try a heated jacket you should try one definitely but you don't have to go that far you know make sure you've got a good set of thermals on long sleeve thermal top good pair of socks I use the heat holder socks all the thermal socks are available <laughs> and make sure you've no gaps um, visor on your helmet always give it a good wipe with some of that sort of Rain-X type stuff the stuff that repels water you don't want any moisture settling on your helmet and then freezing in the cold air and I stick some on my mirrors and on my lights as well the bits of the bike that I want to stay clear keep a good view I keep this bit you need something on your neck can't recommend one of these neck things a neck tube keep the wind off your neck that's where you're gonna feel it and on the bike on the GS it's got heated grips it's typical BMW heated grips they've got two settings one is tepid and one is volcanic <laughs> I 
and you find yourself switching between the two all day. So that's my basic tips about how to keep warm. I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs. Layer up, don't have any gaps. Get the best kit you can afford. Thick socks and a good pair of gloves. So let's look at the more important bit now, the bit about keeping yourself upright. So let's start with the actual weather conditions. If it's snowing and the snow is sticking on the road, stay at home. If it's snowing and it's sticking as slush and being slushed around on the road, it's not really a condition that you want to ride around on your bike. You remember, in a car, if the car's tyres start to slide one direction or the other, it's just going to slide, it's just going to move sideways one way or the other. On the bike, any amount of turn, even this little left hander here, requires us to lean the bike in. And if the bike is lent over in a turn and the tyres lose grip, you don't need much imagination to know what's going to happen. In fact, here's what happened to me in India a couple of months ago, not on snow and ice, just on really awful tyres and really terrible Indian tarmac. Now, I wasn't hurt, I had good kit on, it was no problem at all, I got up laughing, it wasn't my bike, and it was very cheap to repair, but it's best to be avoided, honestly. Falling off is best to be avoided. So when it's slushy and snowy and you've got that layer on the road that can get underneath your tyres, unless you've been caught out in it, stay at home. I'll talk about it if you've been caught out in it in a bit. But, look at today. Today is one of those fantastic winter days in the UK, where it's blue skies, very little wind, the temperature hasn't gone above freezing, it's zero degrees on my dashboard. We'll talk about that in a minute as well. The roads are salted, the stuff you need to know about salted roads. Under some circumstances it is safe to come and have a ride out on a day like this, as long as you take the right things into account. First of all, let's talk about salting the roads. Not every road is salted in the UK. If you're watching this from another country where you get proper winters by the way, this is probably a bit of an insight into how we deal with winter in the UK and, and the answer to that is badly. Very few drivers put winter tyres on the cars, and I've made a video previously about why you should definitely put winter tyres on your car. I'll put a link in the description below. And the local authorities and the highways authorities salt the roads. In more extreme climates, in properly cold places, they don't salt the roads. Because salt isn't effective below about minus 7 degrees. And this is something you need to bear in mind. It was minus 8.5 degrees in Shap, just up the road from us, the night before last. And at that temperature, the salt isn't doing its job. But let's talk about how the salt works. So local authorities, highways agencies, highways authorities, salt the main roads. They don't salt a lot of the minor roads, the side roads. Oh, the road's closed ahead. see where. Just concerned that that might mean that this road hasn't been salted but there. No, it looks it looks like it has been. I'll tell you how to tell in a bit. Yeah, it's a sort of mixture of salt and a bit of sand and grit in there but it's mostly salt and the idea is that the salt is spread and you usually go out the night before, a little bit later the night before, spreading the salt spread across the whole of the road surface. Now, when it's first spread the salt is useless doesn't do anything. It needs squishing and squashing into the road surface. It needs traffic flowing over it. And the reason for that is the way that salt works is it mixes with the moisture on the road surface. And that's that moisture that turns into ice at zero degrees. But it mixes with the moisture and it turns it into brine, it turns it into salt water. Salt water or brine has a lower freezing temperature than fresh water. So it's that lower freezing temperature that allows the roads to retain some grip. Now, when it's first been spread, like I say, you'll see the salt scattered across, large salt crystals scattered across the top of the road surface. That salt hasn't done its job at that point, so that road will still be as slippery as it would have been without the salt. But if you look at this road surface, have a look. I've got the sun behind me now so you can look at it quite clearly. You can see 
There's some grains of grit and salt in the centre part of the road, position two, which is where the car's tyres don't tend to run. So they've been swept into the centre. So we know this road's been salted. And we can see a sort of wet sheen on the road surface. And it is wet. It's wet because that's the brine, that's the salt solution sitting on the road surface. If this road hadn't been salted, we'd see more of a frosty look to it. You would pick up little glints of ice crystals and you'd see a slightly lighter, whiter look to the road. It gets a frosty sheen on it. So on roads that have been salted, we're okay down to about minus six. That's about as far as I'd risk it. Minus seven and below, the road is likely to start freezing again because we're getting below the freezing temperature of brine then. So if it's really cold, and that is really cold for the UK, let me be clear. Those of you that live in countries where it's minus 30, minus 7 is about as cold as it gets. I do remember it getting into double figures a couple of times. But that's a rare occurrence in the UK. So you can sort of see why they feel that salt is an appropriate measure on the roads. People don't put winter tyres on, they don't get the benefit of those winter tyres and the authorities spread salt. But they only spread them on certain routes. Now your motorways, your trunk roads, your air roads generally will be salted. Like this one, the main road, and this has been salted. And they'll be done on a regular basis. Your side roads, B roads, they're to be avoided when it's like this. Because the chances are they haven't been salted. Some authorities have arrangements with local farmers if you're out in rural areas. And just a word about rural areas, they tend to be colder than urban areas. It tends to it, Cities tend to retain a bit of heat with all the buildings and everything. But in areas like this, it will always be two or three degrees colder than it is in urban areas. So if you, if you live in a city and you get up and it's one, two degrees, you think you go for a ride. Remember, if you get out into the countryside, it's going to be a bit colder. And another thing, on this, on this bike, I have a temperature gauge down here. I always used to call it the outside temperature gauge, but we're outside anyway, aren't we? It's an outside temperature gauge in a car, but on this, and at the moment it's showing zero degrees. Uh, but that is air temperature. That is the temperature of the air. It's not ground temperature or road temperature. The ground temperature is usually two to three degrees colder than the air temperature. So at zero degrees on my dashboard, it could be minus one, minus two on the road surface itself. That's important for you to remember, especially when you're trying to judge whether it's safe to go even if it's been salted. If that was showing minus five degrees, well, we're getting down to minus seven on the road surface. You need to be careful. Same in the car, that. That's why temperature gauges in cars here, I'm going to get salted now. Oh, he turned it off for me, good lad. So that's why the temperature gauge flashes at you when it gets to two or three degrees centigrade. On this bike, it flashes at me and goes blue at three degrees, gives me a little warning every now and again. It's because at three or two degrees positive temperature, it could be freezing on the road surface. So that's worth bearing in mind. Now let's think about that road surface. The salt is good at dealing with the general road surface, the general frostiness that appears on the road surface. What it's not good at is dealing with frozen puddles. And a frozen puddle is what's generally referred to as black ice. Black because it's very difficult to spot when it gets darker. But in daylight, what we're looking for is frozen puddles. We'll go back the other way so we can see if we can spot some frozen puddles and I'll show you what the road surface looks like as well. Now it's just been gritted, we're right behind the gritter and although we're going into the sun now you will see there's a little scattering of salt on the road surface there and that additional salt needs a bit of traffic going over it just to squish it into the road surface. So you need to keep a very careful eye out for anything that looks like a puddle because the salt will just sit on top of that, it won't, it won't melt a puddle it won't get squished in. Sometimes somebody might put a wheel over it and you'll see the broken shards of ice, but mostly we're looking for anything like this on the left here. 
around that S of the slow that looks like it might be a frozen pub. Um, on roads like this in rural areas you're more likely to find them right on the near side because this road has crown camber, it's higher near the white line, the water drains off to the left and to the right and then in lower lying areas, off the, you know, you get into dips, a little bit like that, that water then sits in the near side. So when you're positioning in this weather, don't go fully position one. Go to about one and a half at the very most. That's going to be your surface position. And that will keep you out of any black ice or frozen puddles. The puddles, anything that's holding some moisture, holding some water in it, they are to be avoided. Now another thing you need to be aware of on these roads, and there's a nice example coming up in a minute, are microclimates. So as you can see at the moment, the sun is out. It is a lovely day. And where the sun hits the road, like it does here, it just raises the temperature a little bit. I mean, it's still cold. It's gone up to plus one. It still could be minus one on the road surface. But the sun just has that warming effect. And it melts any ice, it melts any frost helps the salt to do its job, but it's got to have been in the sunlight. So you need to look out for shady areas like this. Can you see how we're going into these trees now? Look how much more frost there is on the roadside, on the verge, on the hedge. They've been shaded from the sun and they've stayed frosty. And the road surface has remained colder than the rest of the road. So if the sun's hit it, it's a good chance, certainly by this time in the day, 12 o'clock, there's a good chance that that ice might have been melted a little bit by the sun but look out for the shady areas here again look under the trees look how much frost there is on the offside there on the verge on the hedges quite a lot of frost so those are the areas where you've got to be particularly careful also the other place that you'll get microclimates or that you're more likely to get microclimates is bridges so under a bridge, obviously, the bridge will shade the road from the sun and it'll stay colder. But on top of the bridge as well, the road surface on top of the bridge will remain a lot colder. So you can get a perfectly ice, frost-free stretch of road leading up to an overbridge, which can then suddenly become icy. So be careful with microclimates. Now what about the riding? What am I doing? Well, apart from constantly switching between one and two on my heated grips I'm keeping a careful eye on the road surface but as far as the road the riding itself is concerned you've probably noticed I'm not pressing on I want to be really smooth with the inputs on the GS it's quite nice because you can generally just use acceleration sense just to roll a little bit of speed off so our speed reduction is very gentle but any steering inputs any throttle inputs the ice on the near side there are smooth and flowing uh, I've definitely reduced my speed. I'd be riding this road a lot quicker than this if the road surface was dry. I'm also riding probably in a gear higher or even two gears higher than I normally would. I'm keeping the revs down. What that means is if, if I do give a squeeze on the throttle, it's not putting a huge amount of torque to the rear wheel. It softens out the throttle response. I've also got the bike in rain setting. So this has switchable riding modes and the rain setting is the one where it throttles the engine response back so you get a smooth and controlled throttle response not vicious at all but it also sets your stability and traction control and all your electronics onto their maximum settings so they will step in at the earliest point and if you have got a bike with this electronic package on it honestly you want it on its highest settings so the, normally a rain rain setting is going to be the best one that means everything will intervene at the earliest opportunity but as far as my position is concerned the other little bit of concern I have when it's been salted on a road like this is you get this accumulation of salt and grit in the center of your lane so you can see it there leading up to the traffic lights it's a dry line in the middle and you might think oh I'll put myself on that. that's where the salt is well that salt hasn't done its job remember so I tend to keep my positioning mostly to positions one and three or actually as I said before one and a half and uh, sort of two and a half to three and that's because unlike when the roads are damp where you seek out 
a little bit of dry road surface what I'm seeking out is actually the damp road surface today there might be a bit of frost under that grip plus we don't want to be on the grip do we there's less there's less grip so try to stick to the damp tarmac and I suppose the, the last tip I'm going to give you relates to other road users, other drivers. For some reason we never ever get used to a bit of winter in the UK. We're used to rainy, drizzly winters and then every year it comes around, doesn't it? We get a little cold snap like we've got at the moment, a few days where daytime temperatures don't really get much above freezing. And everybody goes out and drives like it's just a summer's day. They don't adjust the driving. They don't change the tyres. They don't take into account the things that I've just been talking about. So, have a careful lookout for the other idiots. Somebody wants to pass you, let them pass. Look at the corners up ahead and imagine somebody coming round. Use your imagination. What could happen? Somebody comes round that bend in front of us there too quick. It'll probably go into the offside hedge and then bounce back into the carriageway. Can I stop in the distance I can see? And even though there might not be frost because of the salting, it's going to take me longer to stop. Now if you are unlucky and you get caught out, you get caught out on a road that hasn't been salted, or you get caught out with the snow and slush on the ground, there is no shame in parking up and getting a taxi home. There's no shame in that. There's no shame in sticking both feet down, riding along with both your feet down at slow speeds in first gear. None of us want to drop the bike. A bit of paddling when it's like that might just keep you upright. Now there'll be people watching this who are experts in off-road riding and experts in riding on snow and slush and ice and they'll tell you I'll keep your feet up, stand up, be right. That requires practice and it requires instruction and it requires having a go at it and it requires falling off a few times before you learn what to do. I'd rather you didn't fall off on the road, do it in a field if you want, but I'd rather you didn't fall off in the road. So take your time, be very careful, especially with that snow and slush on the road. If you have got that very slippery road surface, try and do all your braking in a straight line. Try and favour your rear brake, we always favour the front brake most of the time. But try and favour your rear brake because it's softer, it's more gentle, it's not as harsh as the front brake. And if it does momentarily lock, it's just going to drag behind the bike if you're going in a straight line. You lock that rear wheel you'll feel it just release the brake pedal. You lock your front wheel, chances are you're coming off. I remember when it is snowing, especially when it's icy, if you do need to stop, it can increase your braking distance by up to 10 times. It's going to take you 10 times as long to stop when it's icy. But that should only be if you get caught out. And that can happen to any of us, can't it? So bear that in mind. So that's it for this video. I thought it was timely, seeing as how cold it is at the moment so hope you've enjoyed it hope you've got something out of it remember the first lesson you don't have to go out or if you don't fancy it don't other transport options are available and stick to the main road stick to the roads that have been salted so that's it from me hope you've enjoyed the video hope you got something out of it if you haven't already give us a subscribe all the usual stuff don't forget to go and have a look at the website reglocal.com there's loads more information there about advanced performance riding and driving and don't forget I've written a couple of books they're not about motorcycling they're about driving I'm in the early stages of a motorcycling book but those books are available on Amazon loads of good tips in there even if you are a motorcyclist but for now thanks very much for watching I'm going to go and have a hot chocolate now we'll see you next time